Hello my lovelies, welcome back to my channel and I hope you've had a fabulous first few days of November. In today's video I'm going to be starting a new series that I've been thinking about for a really long time and that I have very imaginatively entitled Make Do and Mend. Now as a lifelong thrifter, vintage shopper and dressmaker my wardrobe is a fairly sustainably put together wardrobe, sorry about Loki. Um, <laughs> sorry about the derriere, <laughs> embarrassing cat. Um, so sustainability has always been something that I've been very, very passionate about. When I was doing my recent wardrobe audit, I realised that I have a lot of clothes that I'm not wearing because they need to be repaired. So I was very inspired by the World War II make, do and mend publications that you can get. And because of rationing and limited resources, hence the rationing, people had to be very considered about how they were using their resources. And even though we're not in a wartime now, thankfully, we are in a very serious state of climate emergency. For me personally, I want to show inspiration and positive pathways forward rather than talking about all the problems and the issues that there are in the world. We know that they are happening and there are people who can speak with far more intelligence, eloquence and with depth of knowledge than I can. So I just wanted to start this series which will involve repairing things, revamping things. I don't really like the phrase upcycling because it just doesn't sound very sexy. So revamping things, finishing things, altering things because quite a lot of my items that I have in my wardrobe I don't wear because they might need a bit of a tweak or there's something just slightly wrong in the proportion or there are tears or so on. So it's really about having a lot of fun and there will be thrift flips, there will be things made out of other things, there will be alterations of garments and amendments of garments. As you may know, if you've been here for quite a while, I was a wedding dress designer and I was a sustainable wedding dress designer. So I sourced my materials and um, embellishments, etc., as sustainably as I possibly could. And that was before it was quite so much of a buzzword. It's always been a buzzword for me. I used to go to school, we had a bottle green uniform and I used to go in army surplus clothing with a shaved head and piercings because I was one of those people. And really I'm still one of those people, just not with a shaved head anymore. In this first episode, I have a few things already in my wardrobe that I want to see if I can adapt slightly so that I can make them wearable because they're things that I'm not wearing. There are a couple of things that I can't wear because they need to be repaired. I just want to show you a few quick and simple ideas that can turn a piece of clothing that is a real wardrobe dud into a little piece of wardrobe amazingness. So I hope you enjoy. First to be repaired are my vintage 1940s corduroy trousers that I have made. The seams are coming undone and I think that's because I used old thread. So they're a little bit airy at the moment and I'm simply just going to sew over the seams, all the seams, to repair them. It's actually one of my top vintage tips that when you buy a vintage piece of clothing you do sew over all the original seam lines or get someone else to do it because these are always the first to go. I've had this Christian Dior white shirt in my wardrobe for such a long time and never wear it I think it's because it just looks really uninspiring. So I'm going to try and change the buttons. I've chosen these glass quartz ones and I want to see if that inspires me to wear this shirt any more than I do already, which is never. Next up, I have this silk whistles dress with the prettiest scallop detailing on the neckline. 
I love the grown on sleeves. It's a little tight on me, I have to admit, tighter than it used to be. And I think the shape and length is quite unflattering. And then I have this dress that I made. It's one of my Gypsy Rose wrap dresses. I love the print, but I think short is not really where I'm at these days. So I'm just going to take both of them up and turn them into tops. I worked out when I tried both dresses on that I wanted them to measure approximately 22 centimetres from the waist to the finished length. And when you take things up, you should always take them up from the hem. I'm not doing this in a particularly scientific way and I'm using my eye more than I possibly should. But I'm basically measuring up from the hem 25 centimetres at intervals and just cutting along to that point. I repeat this process on the other dress to get it to the length of top that I would like. I'm again using my eye more than measuring. Hopefully it will come out good. I won't be discarding the off cuts from either of these dresses because the prints are so pretty and I've got plans for them. And Missy Batfinkelstein has decided it's her new favourite place to snooze. Altering the length of an existing garment is one of the best ways to change the look of something, especially if the proportion is a bit funny. By that I mean the length of it is unflattering or sits in a strange place. And sometimes, as much as I love dresses, a top here or there can just really add a huge amount of life to your wardrobe. After overlocking to neaten the hems, I simply fold up the width of the overlocking and top stitch the new hem in place. I do this on both dresses. It really only takes a few minutes to make this alteration and I'm wondering why I left it so long to do it. Next up is to remove the buttons from the white shirt. Thumb gate is still ongoing so holding scissors is a little bit tricky. But these very pretty mother of pearl buttons have to come off and it takes me a little while to do this because of my thumb and how well they've been sewn on in the first place. It is a universal cat law that one's cat must come and sit on whatever it is that one is doing and especially if you have black cats and you are working on something that is white or vice versa. I always feel really excited at that stage when it's time to sew on the buttons because it means the project is very nearly done and very nearly wearable. But I also slightly dread it. I find that I must have sewn so many buttons in my 40 years of sewing that maybe I'm just really over buttons. But I always get very excited when I see pretty buttons. So what can you do? Missy is normally quite camera shy, but for some reason today she's very photogenic and decided to come and have a good old clean right by me whilst I was sewing. She's a very spiky cat. She reminds me of the, is it the Flurken or the Flurgle in Captain Marvel? I fully expect tentacles to erupt from her any second. So I stay very, very calm and careful around Missy. But she's a sweetie, as you can see. And here are my finished altered pieces. I'm really, really pleased with this alteration, simply turning this dress into a top. I think if I'd made it a midi length or maybe a little bit longer than that, a full length dress, I would have loved it and worn it loads. But as it is, it was never worn and now it's a top and I think I'm going to be wearing it a lot. I've popped it on here over the black cord 1940s trousers that I repaired today as well. And I really like this look, although I think it might look a bit better over slightly wider leg, more palazzo style trousers or even an A-line skirt, I think that would be great. And then here is the other dress that I turned into a blouse. It is a little bit snug on me, but I really love the amendment. I think it makes this 
much more wearable. I wanted to wear this new blouse with my French Navy version of the 1940s vintage trousers, which were the other repair from today. Even though the blouse is a little bit snug, I am really pleased with the result. I think it looks very 1940s, very vintage. And the scallop detail is so pretty and the print is so pretty and it is pure silk. And then I've styled it here with the jacket that I made to go with the trousers and an antique tiny minuscule tapestry brooch. I think actually looking at this jacket though, this needs a little bit of work. The proportions are ever so slightly wrong with this jacket. But that's one for another Make Do and Mend episode at some point in the future perhaps. I really wanted to make this shirt work in my wardrobe because I was very inspired by pictures of Audrey Hepburn and Ava Gardner in the 1950s styling their shirts in this sort of a way. The buttons actually are ever so slightly too small for the buttonholes on this shirt so I may have to rethink and use different buttons but that's okay. I know that styled like this, I will definitely be wearing this shirt. And I've styled up the shirt again, just buttoned all the way up to the top with a vintage silk scarf tied in a bow with my 1940s vintage trousers. This was a look I've seen worn by a lot of 1940s Hollywood stars and I really like it. I'm actually so pleased with all of my repairs and alterations and revamps today. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope this has given you a few ideas and been a little bit inspiring. I am going to put some stuff up on the community tab, some pictures, some ideas and so on, just for you to have a little look at if you're at all interested. And I thought it would be really, really good if you have some things that you have revamped or altered or a few ideas that maybe we can share things there and it can really be a community of people making the world a better place one stitch at a time because you know that that is my mantra. Thank you so much as always for all your many wonderful kind beautiful comments about my plans my big news that I shared in the last episode of Vlogtober. It really means the world to me. It warms my heart so much that you are there and along for the ride and going to share the journey with me because I love sharing my journey with you. Thank you for taking the time to spend the time with me today in my little cottage by the sea. In next week's video, I am going to be doing a little bit of pattern adaptation to the Bella tea dress and making a new version of that so check back if that sounds like your cup of tea. I hope that wherever you are in the world my lovelies I hope you're keeping safe and well and I look forward to seeing you next time. Take care, bye!